Hello, GLAD friends. My name is Ross Murray. I am the Senior Director of the GLAD Media Institute, and I am joined today by Wanuri Kahiu, the director of the critically acclaimed Kenyan film Rafiki. Rafiki is the story of love between two girls wrapped up in the youth culture of Nairobi and the politics of Kenya. It made its international debut at the Cannes Film Festival in 2018, and it has been making international waves ever since then. And Manuri is also the co-founder of Afro Bubblegum. It is a media company that supports, creates, and commissions fun, fierce, and frivolous African art. And she's got a huge number of projects on her plate going forward. So welcome to GLAAD. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. It's such a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So maybe just to start, what inspired you to want to tell the story of identity and romance between two young Kenyan girls? I think more than anything, I just wanted to tell a love story. And, and often because we don't get to see ourselves in love as, as, as much as I would like um, in Kenya. And I saw growing up, other people were falling in love. Everybody felt like they were allowed to fall in love, but there weren't that many experiences of Africans falling in love on screen, and I truly, more than anything, wanted to make a love story. So when I read Monica Arakde Nyeko's Jambula Tree, which is a short story, I was just swept up by the way that she created her characters, her world, the innocence of the love, and I just wanted to bring that to life on screen, so we started that journey. And now, Kenya is one of over 70 countries where being LGBTQ is criminalized, the relationships are criminalized. Does that make telling a story like this more important or, or more difficult? I think it makes it absolutely more important because I think what, what I've seen happen is the erasure of people as a result of lack of representation or just they're not seen, their voices are not heard. And the only way to just more than anything, humanize people is by telling their stories. And I wanted to do that. I wanted to be able to add to the stories of the people that I love and I know um, and, and really use that as a way of not only telling a story of love, but also a story of Nairobi. Um, so I think that it is vitally important in times like this to tell stories that, from places that are, are being silenced. And now Rafiki was impacted by Kenya's anti-LGBTQ law. Can you talk a little bit about your legal fight just to get the film screened? Well, so Rafiki was banned in Kenya, which means it, the broadcast and distribution and possession of the film is illegal in Kenya. And when the film was banned, we decided that we wanted to kind of push back because our constitution allows us freedom of expression and we wanted the film to be able to be seen. So we went to court and we asked for the ban to be lifted for seven days initially so that we can be eligible for the, to play, to be eligible to be considered as an Oscar nominee in the foreign film section from Kenya. We were not chosen, but the film went on to play for seven days, and we had sold out audiences, and a lot of LGBTQ plus people came out to support the film. They felt seen, and so many stories came out over that week about people coming out to their parents, going to watch the film, going back to get their parents to come and watch the film with them, and then coming out as a result. So it started much needed conversations within families, and, and then, later on continues to start larger conversations within the country. But we are continuing a fight for freedom of expression, and we are in court, and we'll be back in court in June fighting the case. It sounds like this film is incredibly important for the LGBTQ community in Kenya so that they can see themselves being represented and find a way to talk to family members. It is, but also around the world. So even when we went to screen it in the UK, we found that Rafiki has started to create safe spaces. So in a recent screening in the UK, a young woman brought her girlfriend to meet her father for the first time during the screening. So oh, that's touching. Yeah, so there are all these moments and all these uh, people who are coming out and feeling like Rafiki can be the space that, that, brings, that brings people together or that um, starts to introduce people to, 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 their, to their own lives, 
where they can start having really honest conversations about who they are and how they identify and, and who they love in a very specific way. I've never seen, I've just, I, I never expected that to happen and I've never seen that happen with any other of my films. So it is, it's such a joy to be a part of it like in that way. That's amazing. Are, is there something that, that you think is important for the rest of the world to know about the LGBTQ community in Kenya? I think that it's important to know that we fall in love any other way, any way that uh, people fall in love. I think that it's important to know that um, so often people think of, of, of us because of where we live, I mean Kenyans or people of color, as political beings rather than human beings. So that um, other people can fall in love, but us, it seems that we fall in political. <laughs> Makes sense. You know, in a weird way, that really makes sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that love is love until love is assigned a gender and, and, uh, and a race. It's, and then people start thinking that it's, n it's not so much love, it's more uh, an act of defiance or a, politi a political act when it's just love. Um, so it's important to know that the LGBT community in Kenya is really just trying to love and that the LGBT community in Kenya is fighting for the decriminalization of homosexuality, and that case will be decided in May. So send love our way just so that we know that we feel supported, and, and so that this case that begins to recognize the LGBT communities in places that have completely overlooked them are given kind of um, just the leverage and are given the attention that they need so that we can really start turning things around. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it was interesting, and you talked about um, human beings versus political beings. This story is so personal, but it's wrapped up in politics. There's a campaign in the middle of this film, and yeah. it's not just them, they're representing whole families and parties. And yeah. That's huge. Well, one of the things that we were trying to have is a conversation about um, power versus love. And if you had to choose, if you are the father, what would you choose? Would you, if you are the father of a girl who is figuring out who she loves, what would you choose? Would you choose your career, your political career, your political ambition, or would you choose love for your daughter? Um, and the best way to start having that conversation was through the political campaigns in, in the film. And so we were using politics as a metaphor rather than anything else uh, for trying to figure out what, just what direction would the family go? What, what direction would the parents go? If they had a choice to move towards love, would they do that? And then finally, you've got a lot coming up. You've got uh, a film with Universal, and what else do you have going on? Yes, I have a film with Universal. It's called The Thing About Jellyfish, and I'm super, super excited about that. It has Millie Bobby Brown attached, which is glorious. That's excellent. Yeah. I'm also working on a TV show, and I'm co-writing it with Nadia Carrefour, and it's an adaptation of an Octavia Butler book called Wild Seed, um, which is I incredible because it's about shapeshifters and um, immortals and love that spans ages and the way love can be transformative, but also about the way these people in, 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 in the story transform, literally physically transform themselves to be different people um, and, and the different manifestations of love as a result of that. So I'm very, very excited to be doing that and, and even more excited to be working with Juvie Productions, which is Viola Davis's company. Oh, that's great, that's yeah. wonderful. It's not, you're gonna be very busy. You've got <laughs> even more you can't talk about, you've told me. Yeah. I won't dig that out of you. <laughs> Thank but you. Rafiki is open in films in the United States starting today. And thank you so much, Harnu, for coming in and visiting us. It's such a pleasure. Thank you.